Okay, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome to the uh, February 15th, 2024 meeting of the Town of Phillipstown Planning Board. We are we are under we, we have a, our understudies tonight. Um, Ron Gaynor is not here. Steve Gabb is not here. Cheryl is not here. We have amazing pinch hitters. I think this would be a great all-star baseball team, but it is also not our regular uh, cast. So um, we've bear. We've got a deep bench. We've got a deep bench. But bear with us as we we try uh, try it out. So it may not be the, the perfectly most smooth board meeting you've seen. Um, please call the roll. Thank you, Joe Burden. Yeah. Dennis Gagnon? Here. Peter Lewis? Not here. Uh, Laura O'Connell? Yeah. Neil Toman? Here. Heidi Wendell? Here. Neil Zuckerman? Here. Okay, great. Um, let's have a, we have a motion to approve the minutes from the January board meeting. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Corrections, deletions, uh, additions. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion passes. Excellent. Okay, first order of business is RKB Trucking Horseman's Trail. I believe we are checking the resolution of the one comment in the approval resolution. I don't know if we have any. Jason? I mean, I, I, Ron and I spoke uh, while he's on vacation and he had some things he wanted me to clarify. Everything should be. Oh. Jason Sander with Beatty and Watson representing the applicant RKB materials. Um, and he, we, we worked all of that out and he's prepared the resolution which you have before you right mm -hmm. now. Okay, well, I need to ad a motion to adopt a ne negative secret declaration for RKB trucking. May I have a motion to that effect? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Dennis. Second? Second. Thank you, Neil. Comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions. Motion passes. And the approval resolution, I need your permission effectively to sign on our behalf for this approval resolution for RKB. May I have a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Thank you, sir. Second? Second. Second. Thank you. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention. Motion passes. I will sign in uh, due course. Jason, thank, thank you very, very much, much, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Garrison Golf Course uh, PDD slash Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival. Um, I think our plan tonight was to acknowledge or receive the most recent set of plans, and we have a referral from the town board for the zoning code change. I understand this this hearing was still left open by the town board and so we've been asked in our I, I would describe as an unofficial capacity to comment since it's not not our response. We have our our town deputy supervisor who has the burden of voting on that matter but uh, we can comment it but um, Adam do you want to say some things? Sure thank you. Adam Stallero, uh, Cy Paget and Rizal on behalf of uh, Shakespeare Festival. Um, the you, the board did get a new version of the zoning amendment um, from the town board since the last town board meeting that incorporates changes that were requested by the town board. Um, the changes to the zoning amendment uh, that you have now that are, hopefully you have the red line version, are more restrictive than what you saw before and more restrictive than the version that was uh, studied in the EIS. So. In particular, um, there are now um, restrictions on the amount of time that the artist lodging can be let, um, can be occupied both by artists and by guests. Um, both of those uses were studied in the EIS. Um, it clarifies now um, that minor structures that are allowed um, have to be non-residential. Um, and the most significant um, change was that um, where special events could, in the existing zoning, special events are allowed by a parade permit. That's a permit that can be issued by the town supervisor. The um, revisions to the zoning amendments now require that for a special event to be held at the, um, at the Shakespeare property, that it has to go through the 
uh, special use permit rules in the um, in the zoning code with the town board as the approving agency for the special use permit. Um, that's a substantially more involved process involving a public hearing, and it wouldn't just be in the hands of the uh, town supervisor. It would be voted on by the by the whole town board. Um, and there's a whole process in the zoning code for putting those applications, the special use permit applications in. How often does that get renewed? What's that? How, how, long, how often does the parade permit get renewed? Or do you have to reapply? Is it, a I year, guess, is it every year or six months or whatever? I it? guess it would depend on the type of event that they're proposing, whether it's a recurring event or whether it's an event that's a, a one day or a one weekend event. And what about the permit that they're well, working under now? Yes. And how often does that have to be Once renewed? A Once a year. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I'm just trying. I'm playing catch up here a little bit. Yeah. The the special use permit is not um, is not intended to be for the theater events. Those are covered. Um, they, those are a um, allowed use. Um, under the list of permitted uses. So a special event would be something that is not one of the permitted uses. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So our, the board has now had the site plan set, I think, since December. Uh, the town staff have as well. It's our understanding that the town engineer had either no or minimal comments, technical comments, on the site plan. So really what we're looking for at this point are the board's, you know, the board's input on any, you know, questions or comments on the site plan, as well as getting input from the public. Um, you know, the project is now at a critical juncture in the timeline, and that's why when we were here uh, at the January meeting, we requested that the, you know, even though we had not received the zoning uh, amendment approval from the town board, that the planning board set a public hearing for the next meeting conditional on the zoning amendment being approved. Um, we would make that request again tonight. I understand that um, there may be some hesitancy on the part of the board to do that. So also, you know, I would just say that in the alternative, and my client is you know, equally happy to do this, is that if we get the zoning approval um, at the town board's March 7th meeting, that we be able to write to the, to the planning board on the 8th and say, we've gotten our approval. Can we set a public hearing date for, you know, for the agenda on the planning board's March calendar. Okay, so thank you for that. So the purpose of this item on the agenda is so we can answer the town board's request to comment on the zoning uh, ordinance change. Adam, do you want to just explain to the, this Adam, do you want to explain to my fellow, my colleagues what our requirement is and or uh, the responsibility of the town board to listen to what the town, the, the planning board has to say about law changes? Uh, yeah, certainly if this board has uh, comments on the proposed uh, revisions to the local law, um, uh, communicate them. Um, that would be then uh, communicated um, to the town board to take into consideration. My understanding is the town board is meeting on March 7. Um, so if the, this board has any uh, comments, suggestions, uh, about the proposed law. It should be articulated uh, tonight. We'll communicate it to the town board and hopefully the town board will um, uh, act on and respond to those uh, recommendations. Just so everyone's clear, on the 7th, we have a public hearing to finish the public hearing. It's, it's, I think it's at 7 o'clock. I don't know when we can be 7.30. So if the public hearing is still open until then. Uh, okay. So Let's entertain that conversation. If any board members have any comments on the zoning change? And as Adam, I'm sorry, your last your last name is Stallero. Stallero. I don't want to confuse it with Adam. And your Adam last name is sorry. Rod. Rod. Okay. There you go. Well, our Adam S and Adam R will be sufficient. Any comments uh, from Adam S's commentary about what's changed in the zoning law that's being proposed? Anyone want to raise any issues? Again, we this is non-binding. This is more. The town board kindly asked our opinion, and if we'd like to share an opinion that we have the majority view on, we'll transmit those to the town board. Anybody have any comments? Heidi, please. 
I, I do, but I should I wait till for others to go first, or you are going okay. first. Okay. You are the firster. Okay. Be, be um, first. I uh, my I have two comments. One, I have an issue with the the special use uh, language in the proposed legislation. I I and I I think it's uh, it's kind of confusing to say that the special use provision of the PDD just passes through to this new situation because special uses of the property as it stands with a with a golf course and the limited structures were likely to be much much more limited than might happen under the current plan so I think you can't just take the word special use and say well the no action included special use so it just passes through those special uses contemplated there in the PDD are completely different than I think could happen if the development takes place. So to me, I personally recommend to the uh, town board that special use ha be required to have some direct connection with the Shakespeare Festival. It should not be, uh, in other words, there's, it shouldn't be a broad uh, uh, grant essentially to seek a uh, permit for a, for a rock concert, for example. It, ha it, it should have to be related to the mission of the Shakespeare Festival in some way, and I think that there should be a limit on how many can be issued a year uh, so that neighbors don't have to worry that it's going to, that if, that that would be the money making, that it, in other words, that the mission would change over from the Shakespeare Festival sort of to a concert venue of some kind. Um, so that people, and, and, and I, t I do think that we address these issues in the scoping document, contrary to the letter submitted by Saad Paget, because we talked about noise. You know, I don't, you know, we, talk, we heard a lot from people, neighbors and others, concerned about the noise. Uh, community character issue, I think, also relates to special use. Um, so oh, there were a number of different aspects, I think, traffic. A lot of different aspects of the of the scoping document and the, uh, relate to to this issue, uh, even if they didn't have the particular language special use. So I I really think it should be very limited, not very many during the year to ensure that this isn't like a new business model for the Shakespeare Festival and that there's a limited impact on the community by the special use. Um, the other issue I have is with the hold on one second. So, okay. uh, sorry, Kelly. I should have said. Can you just make sure you're capturing all these comments? Because I think we're going to have to do is. Or we, and I guess we can go to the video later, but we're going to have to, I don't know what your preferred method is, but I think we're going to have to just catalog these comments for the, to, I mean, obviously we have, we have our, we have our depth supervisor. I'm sure he's writing them furiously. You want a pen? <laughs> you got a pen. <laughs> anyway, but let's just keep going. All right, so I just want to pause and, all right, keep going, Heidi, sorry. Well, rather than, you know, repeat myself, I'll, so I'll just, um, and then the, my other problem is with the, is a similar type of problem with the with the sort of Airbnb of the of the um, uh, artist housing. Uh, it seems you know I, I I think during the the, the hearing and the sec the whole secret process we we were trying to push back on the notion that this property could be kind of rented out. That should not be the business purpose of this site. It should be all Shakespeare festival related, in my opinion. There could be an occasional use of you know, uh, a guest house, but it should not be, in my opinion, the proposed legislation makes it look like the business could could move from Shakespeare Festival to kind of Airbnb in that portion of the property and having a concert venue, essentially. Those are my concerns. Thank you, Heidi. Others? Uh, I, I have a couple. Uh, regarding the uh, artist uh, lodging, I would like to see clarity on uh, where the staff is staying. They refer to the artists, the performers themselves, but I'm assuming that there's staff that's going to be there full time and how they're going to or where they're going to stay. And then also there's a comment within the document uh, <clears throat> regarding short term, uh, on a short term basis, renting out to guest of the property owner and that is pretty broad so I'd like to have that clarified the other item which brought to my attention was the signage 
uh, regarding a 16 foot height maximum, which is kind of high. And there's no um, mention of the illumination of the sign and how it would be illuminated. I know, I believe that there is a, a code issue regarding uh, interior illumination of signs. And when we go up Route 9 and we see that big monster billboard on the side of the road, I don't think that's what we really want to see down in Garrison at, at that site. So that I would like to have really mentioned uh, or reviewed by the town board. Okay, good, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Others? Nothing that's not going to repeat. Heidi and Dennis. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Oh, look, I, I'm just, uh, I'll, I'll add, I guess I'll echo uh, Heidi's um, second comment. I'm mindful of the several letters we've received related to the artist housing and then the, there's to quote, when not being used by performers, artist lodging may be rented to guests of the property owner on a temporary short-term basis, provided the artist lodging shall now shall in no event be used as the primary resident any individual nor occupied by any artist for more than nine months or any guest for more than a month consecutive. And I think the open-ended nature of that additional um, temporary short-term basis of what that means, I think would require, would benefit from some clarification. And I think, again, I'm, I'm just mindful that we spent a lot of time, the applicant was very thoughtful about when they removed the 60 room, I think it was 60 room hotel, that this has a potential to be akin to that in terms of scope. And I think it's just worthy of clarifying the town board's intention on that. Um, no more comments on the zoning law? No? Okay. Uh, the, I, I think it's worthy of responding, Adam, as you requested. We don't generally have to respond to requests, but I want to uh, address what you said, and I, I think we've, you, you've made the same request before. I'll tell you my opinion. I'll let the rest of the board weigh in. I think it is very confusing for the public to have contingent uh, meetings. We have to notice things ahead of time. We have real noticing requirements and have multiple public hearings from multiple municipality government entities at the same time is not in the public's, in my opinion, the public's best interest. We, this project, and for all your concerns about speed, is going at a blistering pace relative to Hudson Highlands Reserve. I think we are trying our best to be judicious, and the only incremental time that with this costs is frankly the one month between the town board concluding, concluding its work and us picking it back up. So I don't think what we're doing is a overdue burden on you, and I do think in the weight of our, at least I believe strongly in transparency and public input to make sure they're heard, and I think in the benefit of clarity and simplicity, that is the, at least my opinion, I'll, I'll let my colleagues, if they have a different view, speak, but I think the, 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 the simplicity of having the, the next public hearing be after the conclusion of an existing one and make that as a definitive and clear break is useful. I don't know if colleague Heidi, please. It's, I, as I said at the last meeting, I think it's much more respectful to people who are speaking at the public hearing to to uh, not make a conditional decision. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, so I, I really think it should not be done. Are there comments? No, I agree. I think you, it, it, it's prudent to wrap up one, proce procedurally prudent to wrap one up one public hearing before we start another one. I think. I don't think that's a stretch. The, those yeah. comments are, are well taken. That's why yeah. I suggested that we do things in order by, you know, if we, if the town board does have conclude the public idea. hearing. Then we, the, we, this is a once a month board meeting. We are not, we're volunteers who all have day jobs. Being attentive to things via email and then noticing we've got staff that has, mo I, don't, I don't want to do a back and forth here. I, we, are, we heard you. We understand you've made the ask. I think we have a view. We're try, we have tried to be thoughtful and accelerate this where possible and take all considerations. This particular one, when there's multiple entities involved, we're trying to keep the lanes clean. And I think the confusion the public has had over the contingent meeting that we agreed to last time, I think is indicative to me that it is not in the public benefit. So hear you totally, and we are tr we, I promise you, when that's done, we will pick up our next piece with haste. Okay, I just, you know, we will make that request by writing after we get the zoning amendment. I mean, I, things get calendared in between meetings. All the, I mean, you, you set agendas in between meetings, and it, it, this construction is at a critical point in order to get 
construction started if the project is going to get underway this summer and to have one meeting where we the only point of the meeting is to stand up and ask if we can schedule a public hearing is detrimental to the project so okay, thank we'll you. make that request in writing all right, thank you all right uh, next any other business on this topic all right uh, Kresnicki, Kresnicki Plaza one thing yeah, please. about the letter that uh, was sent to us from John Benjamin sure. about the noise whether I was wondering if um, I didn't well, I was unable to attend the town board hearing but I wondered if that letter got answered I just Jason, you just hold on for a sec please throw that out there I, it, I, I, a I, concern um, by Mr. Benjamin about whether we actually have the mechanisms to measure noise in the town and I assume there's an answer, but I'm just I, noting I, that. I distinctly recall us talking about it with the applicant at one of the earlier meetings. You had bought equipment or something, and that you were going to lend it to or give it to the town okay. board. That's, that's, the, that's the plan under the noise protocol okay. is that HVSF will have the equipment. They will do the measurements, and at the end of the required period, they will give that that's equipment right. to the town. Okay, great. Yeah, I distinctly remember that discussion. All right, thank you for raising the height. I didn't request that, honey. We don't have them, but they don't even have they lease it or borrow it from somebody else. So, yes, that's, that's their own fault. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. All right, uh, sorry. Uh, Kranitsky, uh, Krasnicki Plaza, please. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, it's all, they're all different. I mean, all our names are different, I guess. You know, we'd all be Smith then otherwise, so. All right, sir, uh, the floor is yours after I assume you have a change after the moratorium on oil. Correct. Um, just by way of intro introduction, I'm, uh, Adam Thyberg, Inside Engineering Another Survey. Adam. Very popular for uh, those with the mic tonight. Adam T. Adam uh, T. Oh, my God. Perfect. RST. RST. Wow. Uh, representing Krasnicki Plaza uh, LLC, I'm, I'm joined by uh, Tim Krasnicki. So, yes, uh, a lot has happened since this was last before you. Um, the message on the previous site plan uh, was received and has now obviously been codified by the town board uh, and the applicants now just looking to move forward with a zoning compliant alternative plan. So the applicants decided to forego the heating oil storage component of the site plan. Um, the, uh, just to get into the site plan a little bit, the front building and the outdoor storage uh, proposal remains essentially the same. Uh, the building will house their uh, fencing business operation and will only provide office space and just general storage for their heating oil business. There'll be no heating oil storage on site. Um, as previously proposed, uh, there's an outdoor storage and equipment area uh, behind uh, that building that conforms to the regulations in the HC zone. Uh, the change in the site plan is primarily in the rear of the property. Uh, as mentioned, the oil storage tanks have been removed uh, and a second building has been added. Uh, it should be noted that this does not result in any additional impervious surfaces uh, or ground disturbance. Those are essentially the same as in the previous uh, plan. And like the previous plan, there are no encroachments into the watercourse buffer area. Uh, the second building will be divided into units uh, and will be offered uh, for rent as uh, contractor offices and storage space to electricians, plumbers, and similar operations. Uh, we've put together a fairly exhaustive statement of use and we've added a use table to the site plan um, that lays out the potential users of the site, uh, vehicle trips in and out, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, it should also be noted that the second building uh, would, at least to start, only be built out as a single floor floor plan, uh, but a mezzanine office space could potentially be uh, constructed internally at the request of a potential tenant. Uh, that being the case, uh, we've uh, run all of the zoning and parking calculations based on the maximum potential build out of that building. Um, and so uh, that's kind of a summary of the changes and we're happy to hear any questions or feedback you might have. Questions? None? Uh, where, where are you with the DOT on this with the entrance? Mm -hmm. um, we, we've met with the DOT uh, on site, gone over the site plan, and we're instructed on more or less exactly where the entrance should be. Uh, and we're going to be starting you know, formal permitting with them in the near term. Soon. Yes. You're gonna, we're going to have that whole conversation about what size trucks are going in and out. Are they 
Mm -hmm. you know, tri axles or trailers and all that to make the sweep. We've had we have that conversation every time on Route yep. Nine. Oh, you you've actually been in on a couple uh, of these. Of yeah. course, yeah, and and uh, we'll definitely provide. We may have provided. I, I, I'll I'll check. If not, we'll certainly provide vehicle maneuvers in the statement of use. We also outline the types of vehicles that would be coming in and out of the site. Um, I think the largest would be just for the fencing operation. Um, I think we, we said it would be, you know, a truck with a trailer, potentially something of, of that nature, but mostly box trucks and, and things of that, that scale. And you're aware that, you, I'm sure you know that the people on East Mountain Road North are very aware of the sight lines looking south mm -hmm. when they're trying to pull out. You, you know that's coming. Yeah, we're, 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 we're aware of all that. Yep, okay. and we're, we're sensitive to the, to the uh, concerns of, of the neighbors on... Um, East Mountain Road, obviously, in initial version of the, the project, we showed it as a through loop that came through and exited onto East Mountain Road. Due to the concerns of the neighbors, we've obviously eliminated that, um, and we've reconfigured the driveway so that it, you, know, you can turn around and you can have our entrance and exit both on Route 9. And again, we've, we've had that preliminary meeting with DOT that was basically instructed us exactly where to put the driveway. Mm -hmm. No, that's it. Dennis. I don't know if you had listed it or I missed it, but regarding <coughs> signage for your your use and also future tenants, what are you envisioning for, for that you know, roadside? Yeah, so we, we have shown a sign uh, on the site plan that'll meet the code. We haven't you know detailed what that sign will look like, but it'll be similar. Uh, you know, I remember going through the process on, on previous projects. It'll be similar to the other um, you know, signs that you see on that. It'll be a, a wood construction sign. It'll meet the dimensional standards, and, and we'll get you details on that going and forward. Obviously, depending on your tenants. So. Of course. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. I'm sorry, uh, Laura. Um, so can I just ask, what's the next step for these guys? Well, our next step is we, I think we're going to debate after we're done asking questions about whether we need another site visit. Okay. So... But any, but any questions on the project for them? Yeah, well, okay. So um, so in your current set, um, oh, sorry. So in your current set, just a couple of comments that I would think that we should just flag. Um, so one is there is a tree removal plan that you've included. We should have a chart to understand exactly how many trees are being removed. It's, there's quite a lot. Um, and I think, you know, you've kind of gone through this round. I think we're concerned with the trees that are over about two feet in diameter and anything larger than that. So I would just sure. kind of we'll, like we'll, we'll take a look at, at what uh, are defined as regulated trees by, by the code, and we'll we'll get you that for sure. Great. Um, the other thing too is just based upon the entrance of this site, and since you are part of the site next to it. Um, the concern that I can kind of see is the stacking of those entrances and the adjacencies to that. Um, I know that it's as of right, but if there is a truck that is on your site and then another truck on the other site, there's a bottleneck of what the viewshed is south and north. So I'm just going to say that like it is a little bit of a concern because the entrances to both sites are so close. Right, and, and again, the, the, the distances between the driveway are, are DOT prescribed, but we'll definitely take a look at site distances in either direction, and we'll take that into consideration when we do that. Right. And then the only other last thing is between the two buildings and all the, and the storage, you guys are really going to have to lay out how trucks come in and out and have that turning radius to be able to understand, Absolutely. you know, like, I don't know if like if you had two trucks, possibly once you hit three, it gets a bit tight in that back area. Yeah, we don't anticipate there being, you know, three or four trucks just sitting back there. Uh, I think the intent is, you know, the the, uh, the, the building in the back is going to be fitted with uh, overhead doors. And generally, the vehicles of any potential tenant would uh, either be you know, parked in one of the designated parking spaces or be in the uh, in, in the building. Um, and we've designed this area here to be clear and for strictly for maneuvering. There's not going to be you know, vehicles just sitting here. We have parking right here. We've got a building that can store vehicles there. So the area in between is, is specifically designed strictly for maneuvering 
But you're going to do that. And we'll, we'll show you vehicle maneuvers and how we get in and out and everything else, yes. Other questions? Uh, yeah, just, I was wondering if you could talk to the, like the illumination, I brought it up during the site visit um, that we had, but the lighting, like how, is it going to be illuminated during the nighttime and uh, is it going to be on some kind of schedule or is it, yeah, if you could right. explain so, some of that, that'd be great. So up at the, the, the lights in the front, uh, uh, you know, against Route 9 are going to be switch operated and they'll, they'll be operated by the applicant. The lighting that's shown in the back will uh, run on photo cells during regular business hours. Okay. Uh, after that, they'll run on motion sensors and that'll just be for security purposes. Okay. So they'll, they will be off on off hours unless they're tripped by you know, a motion sensor. And then that would be on a timer so it's not gonna kick on and just be on for the rest of the night. Thank you. Other questions? Heidi? I, I'd love to have another site visit because it's hard for me to picture what the storage area yeah. will look like, the 8,800 square feet of you know, open storage. I the storage is no different than what was than what we were able to see. The, you, you, if you remember, the there was it was fairly dense in there. So we, yeah. I think, what we got you was stakes at this corner. We got you the corner of this building, this corner of this building, this corner of this building, and I think we got you saw this stake as well. Um, so it's not going to be any different than what, at least as far as the outdoor storage goes, it's not going to be any different than what you saw last time. Oh. So let's come, if you don't mind, I want to, the second time we've raised can I, let me just ask a couple questions myself and then we can come and debate that comment com, because I do have a couple of content questions first. So can you just remind me and maybe the applicant explain, I, I'm confused about because I don't, still don't remember, what was the, the purpose was obviously uh, a 90,000, I forget the name, number of gallons, a large number of gallons storage of fuel oil and then it was what? What was the other purpose at the time? So the two, the two purposes, or the, the applicant has two businesses. They have a heating oil business and they have a fencing business. Okay. So the fencing operation, as we discussed, you know, taking place on the site remains the same. Okay. It's, the, it's the other operation that has been curtailed in that there will not be oil right. storage so on the, the site. What is the new, what else are you erecting on this space then? So previously there had been a canopy that was pertinent to the heating oil operation there were the tanks right. and then there was just a big turnaround Correct. and and that so that the, all of that is now gone so what is now being added what is the new this use? building but I, to do what so this did i read here it says in our in ron's note was this would contain separate rental spaces for contractor uses mm -hmm. so just can you explain the business purpose of what you're trying to add now sure so Again, the, the building would be, you know, would be divided into units that could be rented out to contractors for office and storage. And those contractors could be electricians, plumbers, carpenters, and, and the like. You're building a rental, a commercial rental facility. For real estate contractors to, understood. to, to, to okay. rent, yes. It, Adam, I don't know if this is in your purview, is your pinch hitting. Is that, is that a use allowed in this? Uh, I would have to check on that. Um, okay. So I don't know off the top of my head, I'll, but I'll we'll, we'll look into This is the use that was approved in the same zone, same thing we're talking about uh, on the, the property next door that was approved. Uh, it falls under, under the town definition of service business. Okay. And that was, that was uh, discussed early on in the process with the property next door, which of course is in the right, same zone. Right. I'm just saying, that in the previous car incarnation of this idea, there was no uh, rental a rental business being created. Not in the previous so a, version. So no. there's a new a new use you've created to. I, does, does your client own this property now? Yes. Okay, fine. So we're trying to figure out how to monetize what was the asset. I take it, and, and that's not a criticism. It's just. I figured he just didn't want, he, originally if this was a better idea, he would have created a rental business, but now he's decided to create a rental business. This isn't the first choice. Understood. The first choice was, Understood. You know. Okay, got it. All right, let's come, now, that's all that I have. So let's come back to the question of site visit. Thoughts around, Heidi wants a site visit, other thoughts? I personally don't need one. You don't need one. Need don't need one. No. Don't need one. Joe? I would like one. Okay, that's two, I, I actually, I actually kind of think we do because I think, frankly, not for my own sake because I have a pretty good memory, but I think giving the town a board member, not board, the community members who were, I must say, besides Hudson Highlands, uh, Hudson Valley Shakespeare's Festival, we've never had more people attend a site visit in my 11 years on this board. 
And I think the volume of interest from the public is not insignificant at that corner. Now, I think that was probably because of the oil, not because of the location alone, but the location itself seems to evince a great deal of interest. And so, frankly, if it's not too much of a burden, I do think you're going to be – you you are a neighbor now. You're not – you're not a prospective one, you're a current one. And I think it may be neighborly of you to explain to folks what's changed. And I, frankly, I think it's to your benefit. Thank you. That's really mature of you, and I appreciate that. So it, I, board members, feel free if those who don't need to attend. I will go, Joe or Heidi or all three of us. And if you want to come, great. But I honestly think it's as much for the, 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 uh, the public as it is for us. Sure, understood. Now, it, but we, I need a vote on that because I'm not sure I have a, I'm not sure I have a, a, a majority of want to vote for it. So if you don't mind, let's just take a vote. All in favor of a site visit to – all in favor say aye. One, two, three. All opposed? One, two, three. I mean, I might show up anyway. Yeah, well, you can't. We won't be anything to show up for if we can't vote for it, because we have we, we we have only six of us, and so we've got to. So I'm going to take one more time. It's okay to vote against it. It would be the first time a site visit was not approved. It was kind of fun. All in favor of a site visit, say aye. One, two, three, four, five, five. One vote, no. It's always good to have a no vote. Please, Kelly, record a five to one vote on a site visit. I I did not. I did not. I did not. That's not fair. Does anyone feel like I strong arm them? If so, we'll take another vote. <laughs> what, what day? What day? <laughs> yeah, you're busy anyway. Yeah. Kelly, do you want to take uh, take the calendar out and suggest? Um, I mean, you brought coffee last time, right? You don't have to bring anything. <laughs> don't do anything. <laughs> you don't even have, just send him. You don't even need to come. Stake, stake the corners of the of the buildings. I think that is important. Yes. Forget the balloons. Just, just take the corners of the buildings. Okay. I know you're not having any oil storage on, the, on this facility, but you're still running the oil business at an office, right? Are you planning to store oil trucks on site overnight? Because, I mean, I don't know what your clientele is, but if you have clientele on this side and your oil on the other side of the county, it'd be beneficial for you to be Parking trucks at night at an episode. So I'm just asking, is that in this like plan or is that part of the use that you already have in there? Yeah, so, yes, yeah, so it, it, there could potentially be, there would be vehicles that would be stored there. We're planning to move to this new facility completely and not run anything out of our current facility now. So, yeah, there would be some trucks that would be stored. Oil trucks? Yeah, correct. Those are planned to be, to be purposely <coughs> left to the front of the house. So. We purposely left the front building. Um, at least it's planned right now that this third, this or this two thirds of this portion of the property here is going to be all um, warehoused basically, and it's deep enough so that it'll fit the trucks, and I could fit two trucks in tandem basically. So that is planned to park in there, and then this also happens to be uh, asphalted. So if there is any potential concern that that's sealed from the ground. Things that need to have store oil trucks there. The only thing, uh, Bob, that I can see that, that I, I sort of know what you're getting at, but I mean, it, it, do you plan on washing vehicles on the on the property? Probably here and there, whenever they get dirty. Okay, but yeah. Okay, well, we're going to have to talk about that, too. You know the new MS4 permits came out, and there's a new provision in there about washing down vehicles and how you might need a... I'm seeing we'll, a, we'll, we'll go, I'm seeing yeah, a we'll, nod. You know what I'm talking we'll, about. We'll, we'll talk about that, and we'll, uh, we'll annotate anything on the, on the plan to make sure that you know, yeah, any of those activities... If, if because it's a, it's a new thing. So um, I don't, I'm not aware of any, any storage. I, mean, I, just, I, know, I see what you're getting at, but... I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I haven't come across anything like that. Um, I know when I had Kevin Riker's property first was at the storage, right? There was some type of concern about trucks leaking oil and stuff on that ground. Like that. You mean from the, from the oil container? You're talking about from the tanker or from the truck? From the trucks themselves. From the trucks themselves. Okay, that's an MS4 issue that we're going to have to have to talk about. Yeah. Okay. 
we'll get you more definitive answers on those and we'll we'll make sure it's it's clear on the plan um, okay back to Kelly on a uh, date please so in March you have March 10th the 17th or the 24th Uh, 10th, okay. Sunday, March 10th. Sunday, March 10th. Mm -hmm. so we'd still be able to get oh, okay. All right. I'm sorry? Would we still be able to get for the March meeting after the visit? We'd still be able to what? Would we still be able to be on the March meeting? Yes. Yeah, okay. We yeah. would talk about it at the March. The March meeting is not, the March meeting is on the 21st. 21st. Yeah. Exactly when I'm on okay. spring break with the kids. So I wonder who would like to be. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, March 10th? Yes? Yes. Sure. Yes, yes. Sure. Okay, March 10th it is. 9.30 a.m. 9.30. Okay. Uh, what, what, where are we with the tree clearing on this? You're coming into the, you know, you're coming into that time of year. What, what is it, the March 1st? What's the bad, what's the bad, I forget. Yeah. It's, like you it's need March to clear, 31st. You yeah. need to clear this in April, essentially. Uh, no, in March. Or, I'm sorry, in March, right? Yeah. It's up till it, March 30th is the last. Okay. Correct. So. Yeah. Well, uh, what are you? Well, I guess. Uh, what are you thinking? You thinking that you are you hoping to get these? Are you are you geared up to get these trees cleared out in April? I think last time we ran into this, uh, I think we talked about getting a, a just a letter of approval that could be turned over to the building department that permitted just the clearing of the trees and, and nothing else okay. uh, ahead of the dead ahead of that deadline. Uh, because yes, you yeah. know, if you, if you miss the, if you miss that, you're, you're just going to set you then back. There's no construction until For, uh, November. Right. So yeah. let's let, I mean, I know you already talked about it, but I think that would be a good component for your site visit is to make that very clear, not just to the board, but to the people attending. I mean, then you might want to, I mean, you might want to tape them. I mean, you don't want any nonsense at this point because you're going to need to take them down. Yeah, we and could, we could potentially tape a perimeter, you know, because we're, it's, it's the interior of the site. Right. So we could, we could tape an, 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 a perimeter of where those would be cleared. Like just, okay. Okay. Uh, you're right. Uh, yeah. I just want to respond to Neil's comment about the trees. We need to be careful about that. Oh, we need to be careful about that because remember, or because oh, you guys weren't here last meeting, um, Hudson Highlands came and asked for the same thing to kind of move ahead, right, with tree clearing, mm -hmm. and we kind of got hit with the other project that happened on 403 on 403 uh, right. so i just want to it is, it is put it out there i think it is a bad policy for us to keep doing things prospectively before things are done i think it is i think there's a real world situation if we're nearing done up an approval process it's one thing the 403 thing i believe was basically a month away from the approval process they were basically done but when we get caught in this thing like we're not we didn't create the bats but we, but we have a process we got to live by, and approving things prematurely is, I think, we understand what our the applicants' um, uh, staff wants to do. They want us to move things fast, but I think we also have a process we have to abide by. So we have to continue that balancing act. So let's all be mindful as we make, it. and each decision is different. I'm not, I'm not worried about precedent as much as making sure we're making each decision on a similar basis. Okay, so we've got a site visit planned. You guys will be ready and. Yeah, and for clarity, um, we're going to stake the corners of the building. Uh, we are not going to float balloons this time. We'll, we'll stake the corners of the building, and we'll give a perimeter of the clearing area. Yeah, and Kelly, you and Cheryl will work on noticing that hearing. I mean, we've got some time, but I, again, given, as I, I just repeat this, given the attention that the last site visit had, and I think there were something like 70 people there in a very, uh, um, um, not thimble, what's it called when they have all the pricker bushes? Ramble, no, what's it called? Whatever the thicket, it was quite a thicket we were going through there. So, um, yeah, and I, I think it, it's it'll be helpful to have the public there to see that the project is different than what was correct. previously proposed. That's my so there isn't confusion going forward. I so think that's, that's that's my sense. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
All right, thank you, sir. All right, last item is uh, a new <coughs> project in front of us, new business, Mace um, at 429 Sprout Brook Road. Uh, we have a memo from Ron about this one. Uh, sure, sure. It just I, All I need you to do is come up to the mic and um, speak so the folks at home or watching with rapt attention can view it. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Keith Stata, Hiro Cronin Engineering. Uh, we're here representing the applicant, Mason Car uh, Carville, for 429 Sproutbrook Road. With us tonight also is the project architect, Hudson Design. Uh, currently at 429 Sproutbrook Road, there is an existing house, driveway, and a shed, and a small turnaround area for the cars. There's no, currently there's no garage. So this project is simply to construct a detached garage so they can have a place to park their cars and keep them out of the weather. Um, we had a pre-application meeting with one of the board members and the building inspector and uh, Ron Gaynor. Uh, we had some direction from that meeting. We proceeded to prepare the site plans, as you see. We just received comments yesterday from Mr. Gaynor and uh, we are not sure what the next step is right now, but uh, I see what, he, what his expected actions are for this evening. I hand it out to you tonight. Uh, we're, we're looking for a special use permit. Obviously, the, if you saw the plans, the entire site is essentially quite greater than 20% slope. There are a couple pockets where the slopes are less than 20%, and in that little handout I showed you, we could potentially show a garage in that white area. The, the garage is in red, and the driveway extension is in red as well. Uh, so based on what Ron was indicating, we can show a spot on site where the structure itself would be on a slope of less than 20%. And according to Mr. Gaynor, that would keep this project within the bounds of the planning board, as opposed to having to go to zoning board to seek I'm not sure what I guess a variance but uh, we're hoping we don't have to go down that road so um, the detached garage is two-story on North Washington you want to just show real quick what what we're what we're showing here uh, the lower level will be accessed at the driveway so we get the cars in and the second level will access in the backyard with a covered porch the upstairs will be a, a, a workshop for the applicant um, so that requires disturbance in the 20% slopes where we're, where we're showing the uh, proposed garage right now, uh, as you can see. Lower level, driveway, back, upper level in the back so they can access at grade the backyard. Um, if we were to try to put the garage where we're showing it in red, it would uh, require a, a lot more work. Uh, the driveway would be located right along the existing house, I mean, right on the edge of the porch. Um, and it would be higher in elevation, so it would be quite a bit of more disturbance to get the garage to the location shown in red. So we feel the location we have on, the, on our site plan is the best, best fit for what they need. Um, and I think it works. So I'm not sure procedurally. Uh, where to go from here I see what Ron says in his memo but uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions well look I'm just to ask you the direct question before, which is Ron states very clearly and we've seen this many times that you you need to be able to provide the analysis to show that whether the proposed garage could be constructed within the areas of the site which contains slopes of less than 20 percent if so we can do that have you done that analysis What's this? that's well this picture I'm not sure I can tell from this picture I can dance it. I just I got the memo yesterday, so. Right. So I think that I think that's the to answer your point about procedure. I think that's the procedure, and so I, I'm not I'm not faulting you. I 
I'm not an engineer, so I can't adju I can't adjudicate. This is we generally see where there's a some, some numbers that are shown to us. Like I, I just can't tell you if this is me in the criteria, and I think I'd be pretty. I just want pretty, to for tonight. To under, I'm not criticizing. I'm saying I'm just saying I can't say yes. This is sufficient to let us process it. That it actually answers the mail, and unfortunately, Ron is not here tonight. So, and I think for us to schedule a public hearing, sorry, not a site visit when we may have to push this to the ZBA uh, seems premature. And again, it, and, until I feel like, until we know that we actually have demonstrated that you can actually do this within the confines of the planning board's purview, then we can't do anything right now. So my, my ask of you, and it's unfortunate, is that let's get Ron to look at this, let's him say, yes, this meets the, the, the analysis needed to show that you can do this within a 20, less than 20%, and then we'll schedule the site visit. So uh, will I be adjourned to the next meeting or? The yeah, I mean, I, 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 the, the challenge is that I just can't. I get it. So at the next meeting, we can hopefully Ron will concur with what I'm giving him. I'm sure he'll concur with you when you two, you two will talk yes. long before that. And then we'll schedule a site meeting. We'll do, site, we'll do a site visit. At the next meeting, we can hopefully that, at that point schedule a public hearing for the April meeting. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, we could we could probably do that. I think right now what we can do, I think it's since it's no work off anyone's back to declare this a minor project. I don't mind taking that vote, and I think acknowledging that it's type two secret, I think we can do that now as well. But let me before we go on, do my colleagues have any questions about the project? No. Nope. Does anyone see it differently? What we have no, to do? Just prove no. it out. That's no, fine. Right ahead. Okay. So let's just take a vote on can we declare this mar the Mace residential site plan uh, a minor project? Have a mo motion to that uh, effect? That Thank you, Dennis. Second? Second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion passes. Adam, I don't believe we have to take a vote on type two. I think we just declare it. Or do, am I wrong? Uh, I would vote on it as a type two. Okay. Well, May I have a motion to declare this a type two secret action? Thank you. Second. I'll second it. Thank you, sir. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes. So again, as I'm, I'm just please you you work with Ron. Um, if you don't get a hold of him, Kelly or I will just make sure that. But he's pretty responsive. I don't know how long. Does anyone know how long he's on this? Um, is he just just this week? This, this junket that he's on. This is week. Okay, so I'm sure I'll get back to you next week, and I feel like it will be relatively straightforward to decide. And at that point, you'll know whether you have to go to the zoning board. Or All right. Sorry for that. Sorry for the the, the challenge there. Um, I guess we could also. I'd like to hold on making the referrals to planning and such. I think it, involving other agencies at this point feels premature. Thoughts? Who's, who's going to get referred to? Who's Pla gonna... Planning, conservation. Usually, we do fire. I think, but I think it's premature. I agree. Yeah? Yeah, okay, fine. Fine, so let's move on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, any new business for the board? Hearing none, motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Second? Second. Second. All right, thank you all for joining the uh, February meeting of the town, uh, town planning board. I look forward to seeing you all uh, in April. Thank you. Thank you.